As promised during the previous lecture, we will now have a look at how accidents in nuclear power plants are analyzed. Also, we will discuss briefly the Fukushima accident. I would like to remind you of the complexity of a nuclear power plant. It consists of many components, systems, and subsystems. During the lifetime of a plant, several events will take place, which can be caused by component failure, human error, or a natural event. If the safety system works as designed, the plant will be brought to a safe state. If this doesn't happen, and multiple safety systems fail, a severe accident might occur. In this case, preventive accident management will be taken. If it fails, the severe accident will progress. Finally, mitigative accident management is necessary to limit the consequences of the accident. According to the EAEA, the postulated initiating events can be classified according to the frequency of occurrence as shown in this table. At each plant state, you will have a certain probability for the occurrence of an event. Finally, you define acceptance criteria for each event category. Events which occur at any nuclear power plant of a member state are collected in national centers and passed over to the EAA. There is an international reporting system which collects all events globally. The INES scale groups the events in seven categories. This grouping is according to the radiological risk. This slide shows the evaluation of all events which happened in Germany over a period of 20 years. You can see that almost all events had no signific safety significance. In addition, for the year 1991, you see that the majority of events happened during power operation and during revision. Unfortunately, there is no risk-free technology. Despite safety provisions in the design and proper operation of a nuclear power plant, accidents still happen. The three biggest accidents are Treman Island, Chernobyl, and Fukushima. Let's have a look at what went wrong in these cases and what the consequences were. But before we start looking at the details of each accident, let's review the method to evaluate accidents in nuclear power plants. First, a list of the major PEAs must be elaborated for each type of nuclear power plants. Then, the PIEs can be grouped based on frequency of occurrence and by phenomenology. Each safety level, event categories, are defined considering safety functions and operational modes. To illustrate this, the figure shows a sketch of a pressurized water reactor primary loop. According to the phenomenological approach, you evaluate all possibilities for failures or malfunctions as li listed there. These events are then evaluated with numerical simulation tools for safety demonstration purposes. More recently, the Fukushima accident was initiated by two natural events, an earthquake and the following tsunami. After the earthquake, the safety systems worked as expected to provide the short-term core coolability. However, the tsunami that followed the earthquake flooded large areas of the site and took out the residual heat removal systems, which is responsible for the long-term core cooling. Since the heat was not being properly removed from the core, it heated up, oxidized, and melted. To avoid damage to the containment building, the reactor was vent. However, due to a valve failure, a lot of hydrogen, steam, and fission products entered into the reactor building, forming critical mixtures with oxygen and causing explosions, then destroyed the reactor building. The radiological consequences of the Fukushima accident 
were only 10% of the ones from the Chernobyl accident, since the reactor pressure vessel was not severely damaged. However, a strong contaminations have been detected to the northwest of the power plant, and many people have been evacuated and relocated. Large amounts of containment water have been released into the sea. I hope you have learned about the concepts involved when analyzing accidents in a nuclear power plant.